Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Blasty Brain Cells, and the host of Tweets and Readers on Oriented Radio Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented Television. A lot to look at this week here. Obviously, I know a lot of people are very excited about the Lions winning um, over the um, L.A. Rams. Um, still, people are shocked about what the Dallas Cowboys did. Um, obviously, um, you know, Ian Weatherspoon and I, we both have our um, Lassie Brain Cells podcast. Um, we'll probably go more in detail about that. Um, but we're going to look at, obviously, some upsets here that really some teams that I'm really concerned about you know, heading into the um, league play, of course, league play starts for girls basketball, um, where um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how, um, you know, how this works. Um, I know there's one team in particular um, that we got to talk about. It's Rochester. Um, you know, obviously with their loss to Berkeley, um, we're going to talk about how the divisions work, um, look like right now in the girls' side of things with their first games of league play starting up. And then, of course, we're going to look at the boys' side. Obviously, the um, you know, when you look at what's been going on, um, really a lot to look at. So, let's look at, of course, the girls' side of things. Let's go in the gold first. Um, when I look at this division, and I think when you look at what the way Ferndale's been playing, um, you got to look at obviously. What they've done. I mean, the win against Troy has been huge. Their win against Detroit Cast Tech. Um, Coach Keith Paris has really, really done a magnificent job. Just really, you know, in the fact that they have only have, like, I think six girls on the roster, which is stunning to say, considering, you know, I mean, what they've done. I mean, like, hearing what they did to Troy, um especially against, and also against a team like Detroit Cast Tech. Um, they had it rough against Dexter. Of course, Dexter just upset Celine recently. And then you have, of course, playing against Macomb, Dakota, um, where we know how well coached that team is. So really, when you look at Ferndale right now, you got to say, okay, you know, they they got something going. But here's the problem when I have a Ferndale. And this is a... This is a big problem I have with Ferndale. Is what if they get into foul trouble? They don't have a lot of depths. They don't. They only have if they have six girls. That could be a serious problem. I mean, that could really be a problem. Um, where I, I think honestly, you know, they've got to get that addressed. Um, so if you're Coach Paris, you really got to get that issue addressed. You know, the numbers, the um program strength, building the program. But this is a good start. I think this is going to get a lot of girls to come out over there at Ferndale with the way that they're playing. Um, just with the way that that team is. I mean, like, you know, you really look at a course in that division. Um, they can run rum shot in that division. I mean, Avondale has been battling injuries. Um, they ain't been up and down lately. Um, Ferndale U is... It's tough. I mean, it's really tough right now with the way that they're playing. Um, Oak Park, I mean, basically, they, just, they literally can't score. I mean, really, they're a young group, but they just can't score. And that's a problem there. You're going to have to score in this league if you're going to want to be successful. Um, Pontiac, I mean, they've lost three straight, which is a concern. Um, <laughs> so when you really look at this division, Ferndale, this is the Eagles' division to lose. And the way that they built that schedule, the state mode against Detroit Cast Tech, um, you really got to look at what Ferndale is. Um, they're, they're right now clicking. They're clicking on all cylinders right now. So in all reality, you really got to look at it is – you got to get credit where credit's due. I mean, you really got to um, give credit where credit's due. I mean, Ferndale right now, they're a team that's running round shot in that division with the way that they're playing. And, you know, you got to give them props. 
you have to give them props. I mean, this is a good basketball team. I mean, they're a really good program. And right now, they are rolling in that division right now. So, so when you look at Ferndale, just with the way that team is, I mean, I'm telling you. I mean, that team's going to be, they should run Rom Shop in that division. I mean, Abno, I think, is going to give them a fight. But I don't know. I mean, I mean, I just don't think Coach um, Roy Kirschman's team's been consistent. I mean, they haven't really been that consistent, and I think that's going to be a problem going forward. And if they don't address that, then they're going to have some issues. So we'll see what happens there with Ferndale. I mean, like, with Avondale. I mean, we'll see what happens there. But when I look at the division right now, um, it right now it looks like it's going to be Ferndale, then Avondale, um, then Pontiac, then Oak Park, then Ferndale University. I mean, I've seen Ferndale University play. I've seen Pontiac play. I've seen um, Avondale play, and I've seen um, Ferndale play. And when I look at that division, it's clear to this day to me that Ferndale is clearly the best team in that division. Um, let's go now from the gold to the blue. I mean... When I look at this division here, and obviously people are going to say Safi Darts and Tech should run away with this division. They should run away with it. I'm not buying that one bit. There's a couple reasons why. I'm looking at, and I think there's one team we got to start paying attention to. And it's pretty simple. And it's the Berkeley Bears. Here's why. The Berkeley Bears are a team that, you know, last season had it really rough. Change coaches. Enter Clay Shaver. He has given that that team confidence. He's given that he's he's pushed all the right buttons. And you look at the results. What's been doing? You look at what the results have been. I mean, They've been very competitive. They've got a win against Utica Eisenhower to start the year. I mean, you look at players like Avery Wintergarden, Maddie Balzo, um, Mavi Nolan, in my opinion, I think is a very special, talented player. And, and if she's your fourth option on that team, that's scary. I mean, Haley Kirkwood's been good for that team. Um, they've got others. But if Mavi Nolan's your fourth option on that team, then that tells me something. That really tells me something. Because Berkeley can score when they need to. They can also defend you when they need to. In the game against Rochester, they held Rochester to 15 points. Five in the second half. That's unheard of against them. That's unheard of. And they held Alice Max in one of her lowest scoring games of the year. So when I look at Berkeley, you know, and say, okay, do I think this team could threaten a and Yeah, I really do. I really do. <laughs> because you look at what a and wants to do. I mean, you look at what Berkeley does. They'll slow you down. They'll defend you. You know, and, and I think A&T is a perfect test subject to Detroit Renaissance. couple reasons. One, they like go up and down. They're going to go up and down with you. And Detroit Renaissance is in that district. And they're going to want to go up and down. So, when I look at this... um. When I and of course A and T they like to go up and down. Now, albeit Detroit Renaissance, we know it's got a very good big and I Hardy. But I think when you look at that district, I mean coming up, I think it's gonna be interesting to see what they do. But I'll tell you what about Berkeley. They've got something brewing over there. They really do. I mean Obviously, they got balanced scoring. They'll shoot timely threes when they need it. They got proven players can play defense. 
Um, they got proven playmakers. I mean, Nadia Watts, another one. I mean, I'll tell you what, but I've been really impressed with the play of Mavi Nola. I really have been. I mean, you know, she does all the little things. You know, Mandy Boswell's been playing really good for them. Avery Winogarden's been playing good. Haley Kirk was been playing well. I mean, Clay Shaver's got something over there. He really does. He's built three programs there, which I think is huge, especially for the future there. Um, at Berkeley basketball. And he's got something brewing over there. He really does. Um, and there's a lot to like about that team. Really is. Um, and then you look at, of course, the rest of the division. Um, Farmington has really struggled. I mean, they got their first win against Ferndale University. I watched that game, and I was just going like, what am I watching? I mean, what am I watching? I mean, Farmington, they played well. I mean, don't get me wrong. They played well. Ferndale, you struggled. Um, they're struggling. I mean, I didn't like their shot selection. Um, I thought that they rushed it a lot. Um, so after that win for Farmington, they end up having to go play Oxford. And that was not a pretty sight. It's going to be a long year for Coach Natalie Nowak. It's, it's really no, no sugar coating it. It's a long, it's going to be a long year for them because of how they played in that game. And they did not play well. They really did not play well. And that's something that's got to be addressed because now could they, I don't know if they're in the right division considering you know, when you look at the blue, I don't know if they're in the right division because, you know, you look at obviously what happened with Coach Guzman leaving, who's still in the division. She's in the division. She's at Troy now. Um, and then you look at, and then you look at um, a team like Troy Athens, who's been getting better, won four of the last five. I mean, their only loss was an eight-point loss to Stony Creek, and they had Stony Creek... Almost dead the rights. Um, so I like where Troy Athens is at right now. I'm I like where they're at, considering everything that they've been through earlier in the year when they struggled early, and then they, and then they um they're starting to finally pick it up. They're starting to finally pick it up, which is good. Um, but Farmington. I think they're in, they're in deep trouble. I really do. I think Farmington is in some deep, deep trouble when you look at Farmington. And then, of course, when we stay in this division, of course, Southfield. They look good at times. They looked really good. And then they ran into a juggersaw in West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield, we know, is scary. <laughs> but terrible habits came back into play. You know what the score of that game was? 97 to 29. So you're going like, what? How? The fact that that team gave up 97 points and they gave up 71 against Livonia Stevenson. So there's got to be something there that, you know, that's got to be concerning. Now, obviously, West Bloomfield, they're a juggernaut. They're a juggernaut. I mean, they're they are going to arguably be back at Breslin this year. They're going to arguably be, be back there. I mean, you really look at, but with A&T, you know, the fact that they only scored 29 points, that's a concern. It really is when you look at A&T. It really is. Um... That if they can't score, you know, you got Kamira Page, um, Christian Banks. Um, I mean, like, um, they got others on that team. If you're going to Shakia Coltrane, you're going to have to find a way to score points. But also, you're going to have to find ways to defend people. Because when I look at A&T right now, I can't trust this team defensively. 
I really can't trust this team how they defend. You know, when you almost give up almost 100 points. Now, albeit West Bloomy had to have everybody go off, which he did. I mean, Sheridan Beal at 25. Kendall Hedricks, I think, at 18. Um, but still, A&T's got to change their mindset defensively. They really have to, because if not, that team's in some serious trouble. And that's being honest. Um, Adams, you know, very competitive against Royal Oak. I mean, only losing that one by eight. Defensive low scoring game. The fact that Coach Joe Malberg's young team kept them with an eight, that says a lot. And that game was close in the score, and it can, really was. And then they had to go play Clarkson. And they held Clarkson to, I think, I think four points in the second half. I mean, they, I mean, Clarkson held the four points. That says a lot. So when I look at Adams, they're almost a Jekyll and Hyde despite the record. And albeit they got a young team. I mean, Samantha Blaine is their best player. But they need more. They need more from their youngs. From the other ones. They need more. Adams should be competitive in this league. They should be. So that game with Athens is going to be very interesting. That might be the most interesting game of the division. Because that's going to tell a lot where each team's at. So when I look at Adams, it's going to come down to is can, how has the progress of the young, of the young talent, of the young, of the young talent. You know, how is the Layla Tomzak? How is the, you know, you look at, of course, the others over there at Adams. I mean, how have they processed? How have they developed? That's a big question I, I would ask Coach Joe Malberg. I even asked that. I, I thought about asking that question when I had him here in the pot. So that's going to be interesting to keep an eye on with Adams. Then there's Troy. Troy has shown me some progress. Um. Diamond Prince has had had habits of having games where going off for twenty points. Um, Olivia Sprangler is really starting to become her own a little bit. Her and Regan Zider, um, really, I'm not being mean to you, but they look almost like the same player. Um, so I'm curious to see how Guzman is going to use those three. You know, Prince. Sprangler, and um, Zyder, you know. And also you got Kelsey Block, who, 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 um, who is an undersized guard, but, you know, she likes, she, she, she'll go in there and try to get in, and get you some rebounds. So when I look at this situation with Troy for Coach Laura Guzman, the Carly Hagenbottom injury really hurts this team. It really hurts this team a lot. When she got hurt before during the warm-up of the Lake Orion game, um, you could tell there was some trouble there. there. You could tell there was some trouble brewing. Because, you know, and I saw Higginbottom go down. She did not look good. She did not look good. She was on crutches during the game. Um, and that's not an easy, easy thing if you're Coach Guzman. Um, seeing that. Um, obviously Higginbottom's been battling very tough injuries. Um, so when you look at Troy's situation, you got three scores. Two of them almost play the same position. The only other way I can see with Troy is, do you go to more of a four guard, one big set? And I think that's where I think Troy's going. Because... I've noticed that you look at, of course, Reagan Zider's a shooter. Um, Olivia Sprangler's a shooter. Um, and then, of course, obviously you have Diamond Prince. We know how good Diamond Prince is. So when I look at Troy, you know, that could be their lineup. You know what I mean? That could be really, I think, honestly, those three girls have to be on the floor together because it's going to give the defense a nightmare if those three play together. You know, it gives the defense really tough matchups. But on the on the flip side, 
you know, they're defensive liabilities. I mean, Reagan Zider's a defensive liability. Um, you look at, of course, um, Olivia Sprenger. She's a defensive liability. I mean, you know, and I think, you know, obviously you look at it with shooting guards, you know what I mean? You know, that's going to be the question I have with Troy is, if those three can play together, how are they be on the defensive end? And when I looked at the game against Lake Orion, um, Zyder got into some foul trouble and ended up fouling out early in the fourth quarter of that game. So when I look at Troy is, I think Coach Guzman's still trying to figure some things out a little bit. I think they're starting to get an idea offensively. I mean, you look at the offensive numbers that they've had. Now, a lot of that's with Diamond Prince. But if you could have Diamond Prince scoring at least 20 a night, Reagan Zider having 15 a night, Olivia Springer giving you at least 10, 12 a night, that's going to win you games. But then that, but then you're going to have to really address your interior game. So, you know, and obviously when you look at it right now, with Troy, the interior game is still a question mark. Carly Higginbottom going down certainly doesn't help things. I mean, Allie Mantooth is going to have to set her game up. Um, they got others on that team that's got to set their game up, especially in two. Because if you rely a lot on the three girl on the three girls of of Zyder, Prince, and um, and Sprangler, you know you're gonna you're gonna you know they're they're all three of them are matchup nightmares. But on the flip side defensively, you're going to get your you're going to get your points. And you look at it here with Troy defensively, there's been some games that given up 80. I mean, there's been some games that given up 80. I mean, against Lake Orange, they have 72. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens there, but when I look at this division right now, I still think A&T's the best team in this division, but Berkeley's going to be a severe challenger for them. Troy maybe. Um, Athens right now, I like the way they've been playing. Adams, um, has been up and down. And then, and then of course the, um, and then there's Farmington. So, you know, so that's my take on the blue right now is, you know, with that situation, how that's been brewing. Let's go to the white. Um, Royal Oak bounced back ever since their loss to Stony Creek. Um, two good wins against Pontiac and, um, Adams. Um, Obviously, we're going to know a lot about them. I said last week with them was, do they belong in the red? Um, that's the big question. Always has been the question when I look at Royal Oak is, do they belong in the red? Um, they're going to have their test for sure coming up. They have Rochester and Clarkson still to play, which I think those two games are going to be really interesting. Um... But Royal Oak, you know, right now, I mean, they're starting to get back in the thick of it, but they've got to step up their game when they play against teams in the red. And that's the honesty where when you look at Royal Oak, that's really the honest point of that. Um, And then you look at North Farmington. Um, You know, when I look at North Farmington and I look at those two losses um, to Lake Orion and also to Ferndale, I mean, Ferndale, when you look at them, um, you really got to look at, you know, you know, they're not a deep team, but they somehow found a way and um, shut down um, Anaya Billups and also Asiya Jihad. You, sh- you, you find a way to shut those two girls down, you're going to shut down North Farmington. So now here's my question for Coach Michael Long. Where's Hannah Hart? I mean, you look at her coming into the year, you know, she's one of your two returning players. Of course, Billups is a transfer from Detroit Edison, but you know you need you need. Uh, I mean, I know that leadership role is there, but you look at she's going to have to produce. She's going to have to shoot. She's going to have to score because if she if she brings a scoring threat, you know, as that third option, then that's going to take pressure off Billups and it's going to take pressure off Jihad. If you do that, then. I think there's going to be some success for Coach Michael Allen and his team. Um, because let's not forget, this team lost seven seniors last year. They lost their head coach. This is still a young basketball team over there at North Farmington. And can they, you know, put everything together once league play starts? Because I'll tell you what right now, that league 
the white, it's brutal. It is a brutal league. Um, so we'll see what happens there with them. Harper Woods, you know, I, it's hard for me to figure this team out because there's times they look good and there's times they don't look so good. They didn't look good against Canton. Um, you know, I thought Canton really had their way with them. Now, obviously, Canton's got a really good big injustice tremble. Um, so it was going to be tough for Harper Woods in that matchup. They were, there was a time they were struggling to score. And they just go and put it 68 up on Avenue. I mean, they put 68 points on Avenue. Um, so, you know, so Harper Woods, they've got their offense back a little bit. Um, but there's still some questions. Um, when I look at the Pioneers, there's still some questions that they've got to address. And I know Coach Latoya Tate, um, she's, I know she's going to have to address those. So we'll see what happens with Harper Woods. We really will. Um, and then we have, we have Seahome. Seahome's a team that has been like the perfect, you know, middle of the pack team. And the reason why I say middle of the pack team is they do well against the teams they're supposed to beat. And then they don't do well against the teams they're supposed to lose to. If you're Coach Chris Manchester, you got to take the next step. You got to beat somebody you're not supposed to beat. You know, you look at a course, if you, I mean, if you look at a line in Vegas and you look at a course, where, I mean, like, where are you going to stay with Seahome? Is you're going to look at them and say, okay, how is their record? And what division are they in? You know, and, you know, if Seahole's playing against a team that's in the red, they're going to have problems. You look at the games against Clarkston and Stony Creek. Now, against Stony Creek, I'll tell you what, Seahole fought in that game. They fought in that game, only lost that game by six. So, when I look at Seahole, you know, if they would have knocked off Stony, and, I, and I'll tell you what, if they played them again, I think that's another story. Or if they have that game over at, um, you know, if they have that game again, that's over at, um, that's another story. So, and if that game's at, at, and if that game's at, um, in Birmingham, I think that's a whole other story. Because Seahole played pretty well in that game. Um, so when I look at Seahole, you know, they've got to win against a team that they're not supposed to. And I think that's where, um, I would put with Coach Chris Manchester's team. It's kind of the same thing with their arch rival off 13 mile in Groves. I mean, you got to basically, when you look at Seaholm and say, well, um, you know, you're beating the teams you're supposed to beat, but then you're losing the teams that, you know, I mean, you're supposed to lose to. That's pretty much the same thing going on with Groves. Now, albeit the Troy game for them was a toss up. But when I look at. When I look at Seaholm, um, you know, when I look at Groves, you know, Groves and Seaholm are really similar, really similar. When it looks at when it looks at um in that um situation, so you know, for Coach Allison Heidi, you know, she's gonna have to really, really, you know, especially against good teams. I mean, like against really good teams. Um, you know, obviously, you just gotta find a way to be a team you're not supposed to be. So, that's my take on Groves. So, when I look at this division right now, oh, and then there's Bloompia Hills. I mean, Bloompia Hills, um, they have struggled, which has been odd, considering you have um, Ruby Smith there, you have um, Ashley Fortner there, Brianna Young's there. Um, but when I look at Bloompia Hills' problem is, I know Coach Chris and Massey, you know, they struggle a little bit. I mean, they struggle against Oxford, struggle against Lake Orion. Um, so they got to figure out what their identity is. You know, obviously the identity for them is to throw the ball inside, you know, let the bigs work. But, you know, what happens if you're a team at, you know, if you're, um, if you're Coach Massey, what happens if the team feeds you up? That's a problem. That is a big, big problem and a big concern. So, that's something that Coach Massey has to address. 
So when I look at this division right now, I think right now Royal Oak is still the best team in the division. I think right now I would put Seahome at number two, then Groves, then North Farmington, then Bloomfield Hills, and then Harper Woods. And I think honestly, you know, with the way that that's how it, it's going to be right now. That's really what it is right now is until, you know what I mean, with Harper Woods, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Um, they can score in bunch, but they give up a ton of bunches. Um, so that's my take on the white right now. And then the red. Um, West Bloomfield's just a machine. They really are. I mean, dominant against a dominant against A&T. Looked really good in that one. Um, you know, it's not just Davis. This has been really good. I mean, Sheridan Beal's been playing really well. Kendall Hendricks has played really well. Um, Ava Lord's had some moments of greatness. Um, Coach Jerry McAllister, he's got some depth this year. I mean, he really does. But I was really happy they were testing against Detroit Country Day for three quarters. But then they pulled away late. So, you know, so it does prove to me, though, that West Bloomfield, and I'm not being mean here, and I'm not, not sounding like a jerk or anything like that. But, you know, they do have some holes they got to address. But West Bloomfield, in my opinion, they got to be tested more. I mean, they got to get tested. And really, you know, Detroit Country Day did test him. They did test him for three quarters um, until West Bloomfield pulled away late. So when I look at um, West Bloomfield, they need more of those, especially when they get in the postseason um, with that district looming with Farm Tales Mercy in there. Um, Burmy Marion, it's hard for me to trust them right now with the way that that team is. But Farm Tales Mercy, when once Allison Albany comes back, they're going to be better than they're going to be. They're, they could be a dangerous contender. So when I look at West Bloomfield right now, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. And it's not just the Davis sisters. You got Sheridan Beal, Kendall Hendricks. I think it's so hard for teams that have to focus on. The Davis sisters, because you got Beal, you got Hendricks, Lord. Um, you know, they got others on that team that you got to pay attention to. So, West Bloomfield is like a real machine right now. So, we'll see what happens to them going forward. Lake Orion, when you look at the Dragons, um, Izzy Walensky's been playing really well. Um, the Dragons have, have been an offensive machine as of late. I mean, 69 against Boopy Hill, 72 against Troy. Um, defense has been a little bit of a concern, and I know that some um, Coach Bob Bridges' MO has been the defense. Um, but when you look at the pieces of this team, you know you, they they fit like a glue. They fit like a glue. I mean, Ellie Britt fits really well. Nevaeh Wood coming in, coming back to Lake Orion's really been, you know, she's a double double machine. Um, Izzy Walensky, we know, is a double double machine. Um, Charlotte Pavlovsky has been a solid shooter. Um, Ryan Palachak, you know what I mean? She's lived up to the hype. I mean, she's lived up to expectations. Lexi Strohshine's the same thing. Um, Lake Orion to me is a machine. They really are. Um, you gotta like what the Dragons have been doing. You really do. I mean, this team's really dangerous right now with the way that, you know, things are. Um, and here's the thing, they can get better. I mean, they can really get better, too, and that's a good sign going forward. So that's my take on the Dragons is, you know, they're a team that is, you know, they're getting they're getting better, taking it one day at a time. They're developing the bench. Um, I mean, like Grace Hohenshine's another one I'm really high on. I think she's done a nice job. Riley House is another one. Um, Lauren LaForge has had some moments of greatness. Um, Danny Hex has been playing really well. Um a lot to like with this Lake Orient team. And Jana and Jana Kazesta, the um Spanish born exchange student, she's had a nice um nice start to the year. She's had a really nice start. So Lake Orient's a team that I think they're gonna be scary. So we'll see what happens to them going forward there. Clarkston, they found their way a little bit. And I think when you look at the Wolves situation, um, you know, having that loss against Notre Dame Prep uh, against Detroit Country Day, um, Coach Aaron Good now actually said, um, on, on Twitter, now known as X these days, um, you know, it's about teaching, paying attention to principle in detail. And they've done that. 
They've really done that. Um, Eliana Robax, you know, playing to a regular style. Brooklyn Colbert's had some moments of greatness. Um, I mean, Valencia has had some good had some good starts as well. I mean, like, so when you look at Clarkston, you know, they're starting to bounce back after um, playing a really tough stretch. But it'll be interesting what Coach Gunn now does. I mean, really does um, coming up. So we'll see what happens. Stony Creek, they're concerning me a little bit. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Cougars, um, just when you look at Stony Creek, you know, they've had some games where they've had to survive. And I don't know what it is with Stony. If sometimes they go into some lulls, I don't know. But there's some concern when I look at Stony a little bit. Really is when I look at them. So we'll see. I mean, but they're seven and zero right now. Um, tough games coming up. I mean, league play starts for the Red, and where everybody's gonna be beat, beating each other up right now. Um, which is gonna be interesting to see how that one goes. Oxford's won three straight. Um. Peyton Richter's been playing well. Um, Allison Hofstetter has been playing really well. Mia Champagne's really, really become a star in the making. Um, Sophia Ross been playing really well for Coach Rachel Breyer. Um, there's a lot to like. Even though Oxford had to survive against Yale, which was a little bit concerning. Um, against Farmington, it wasn't much of a wasn't much of a fight in that one. But when I look at Oxford, you know. I think everything for them is pointing that district with the at Lapeer with Grand Blank in there. So that's gonna be interesting to see what happens there with Oxford um going forward there. And then there's Rochester. This is a team I'm really starting to get concerned about because Rochester only scored fifteen points against Berkeley. And their guard situation's been a problem. Um at when Alice Mass gets shut down, Rochester's in trouble. And they only scored five points in the second half. That's not good. That's not good. So when I look at Rochester right now, they're in some trouble. They're in some big, big trouble right now. And I think that's something you got that's something that Coach Bill Thurston has to address. And I'm not and and I don't know what's gonna happen when Kyler Robinson comes back. Because if Rob I mean, because you know Robinson's not gonna be basketball shape yet. And, you know, and it's going to take a while. It's going to take a little while. I mean, they've relied a lot on Alice Max most of the year to carry him. And it's clear to me that Max needs some help. And it's one of the guards that has to step up. It's got to be one of the guards. I mean, and, I, and we stress this many times. You know, Rochester's guard situation is a big problem right now. And Coach Thurston has to address that. And we're in league play. If you have to address this in league play, that's not good. That is not good. So it's a tough spot right now for Rochester going forward. It's a really tough spot. So when I look at the red, um, West Bloomfield, I would say Lake Orion's my two. Um, I would say Clarkston with the way that they're playing is probably my three. Stony Creek's my four. Um, Oxford's my five and Rochester's six. So that kind of, so that kind of tells me where, um, each team's at right now heading into league play. Um, that would be where I would rank the teams right now. Um, so that's my take on the, on girls basketball. Um, let's go to the boys now. Um, of course in the boys, um, we had like Friday games were all postponed because of, um, of the winter storm that came through here. Um, on Friday and Saturday, of course, we had a couple girls. The MLK Classic got canceled. Several other classes got canceled throughout the state um, because of the weather, because of the snow and the cold um, that went through. Of course, West Michigan took a beating when it came to snow. Um, I think it got about at least, at least 12 to 15 inches over there on the west side of the state. I mean, like, and then you have the cold weather there. So... So a lot of games have to be make up, made up um, with league games um, when it, on the boys' side that were supposed to be played on, fr on Friday. Now, a couple teams played on Thursday. Um, Adams and Fernda played Thursday. West Bluebeard and Clarkson played on Friday, which was, I don't know why 
you would considering everything at the severity of the weather that was in that one. But they played it on Friday. Um, so when you really look at in the blue division, Berkeley's win against Oxford says a lot to how uh, that division has really changed upside down. It's turned upside down. Um, you know, what Berkeley did winning by 19 against Oxford, it says a lot about that team. It really says a lot about what Coach Joe Sermo's got that team believing. Um, Oxford, in my opinion, I still think, you know, they're going to bounce back from this, um, this tough loss to, um, I mean, like to um, Berkeley. Um, but obviously you got Avondale who can make a really good claim. Avondale has a strong say here in this division. Um, Pontiac could have a say. Um, Rochester's been very competitive, but they have not, you know, they've had some tough losses. Um... So, the blue right now is wide open. I mean, Berkeley controls their own destiny, and so does Avondale in this division. Now, and Pontiac, I think, is a dark horse. You know, and that's beside Oxford. So, if there's a team I've been really disappointed with, I mean, I know Ferndale University's been struggling, um, but I've been really disappointed with Stony Creek. And here's why I've been disappointed with Stony Creek. You're in a second year under Coach Jeff Owen. Second year. You tend to see progress. And when I'm looking at that record, I haven't seen it. It's clear to me that this team needs Trey Walker on the floor. I mean, when you look, and they're giving up points. This is a problem. I don't know what it is over there. If the players aren't clicking, I don't know if they... I don't know what's going on there. But they're losing some games they're not supposed to lose. So when I look at this team, when I look at Stony Creek, you know, and I'm looking at the game against Rochester coming up and say, well, this is this is this is a must win for Stony Creek. Because when I look at Rochester, Rochester's getting better. And yeah, their record uh, and their record says so and their record, yeah, their record's struggling. But they've lost a lot of close games. Stoney's not been able to put it together, which is a problem. I don't know what it is. I mean, last year, they struggled through the transition period. This year, it's year two. Your JV team was very good last year, and yet they're not clicking the varsity level. So how do you explain it? How do you explain it? You're giving up points and bunches. That's not good. Um, I mean, this team's really struggling. They've got to figure it out. they got to figure it out and quick. Because if not, they're in trouble. I mean, I think they're already in trouble right now when I look at it. I mean, especially the way that they're struggling. They've got to find something in there. They've got to find something. Because if they don't, then they could be a, then it's going to be a very long year again. So, when I look at Stony Creek's case, you know, and I'm not even talking, you know, Royal Oak yet. I mean, Royal Oak is a team that, you know, Royal Oak's been struggling a little bit. One and three, I think, in their last four games. That's that's concerning for Coach Aaron Smith. Really concerning. Um, it's almost like the same thing happened last year with them, where they had a great 2023, where they had a great 2022, but they struggled in 2023. It's going on similarly this year with them, where they're having a good, they had a great 2023 early part of the year when the when the calendar turned. They're struggling. Albeit they had that tough loss to Novi. They haven't recovered since that game. They really haven't. So if you're Coach Aaron Smith, you've got to get back to that formula that got you back to your winning ways. You do that, you can fix this real quick. So when I look at the division right now, in the blue, I would say right now the best team in that division and I look at the best team in the division right now. I would say 
Berkeley right now is one. Avondale, two. I really like how Avondale's been playing. They've won three straight. Um, I would say Oxford, three. Pontiac, four. Royal Oak, five. Rochester, six. Stony Creek, seven. Ferndale University, eight. That's my order right now in the blue. In the in the blue right now. That's my order in the blue. Let's go to the white. Um, when I look at the white, and obviously we know how good Troy is. Troy right now off to an eight and one start. Um, actually nine and one. Um, they knocked off Bloopia Hills. Chase Kuiper had thirty two. Um, to lead Troy. It's really the big three. But a, but a player I think that's been really been really impressive for Coach Gary Fralick has to be Andrew Lake. Now, Andrew Lake has really emerged as that point guard that can move Mason Parker the off ball to the outside, you know, off the ball. If you if you can do that, you know what I mean, that's dangerous enough. Because you have Kuiper in the inside, you have White side can play forward, and then you have, of course, Parker can shoot you three if you need it. You know, playing off ball. So if you're Coach Gary Fralick, you got to like what the development of Andrew Lake has been. Because I think Andrew Lake's going to be a really good player for you, for Coach Fralick. I think he's going to be a really good player for them. Um, They got some good role players on that team. I like Jack Sabaka a lot. I think he's going to be a good, a good role player for this team. I think Troy's been using their bench a little bit more, which has been very good. Um, and I think that's going to be key for them going forward, especially against a team like Grimmie and Brother Rice, who they could be dealing with in the district. Um, so when I look at Troy right now, they're just they're clicking on all cylinders right now. They really are. And then we have Harper Woods. Um, Harper Woods had a really tough loss to Troy Athens, um, 45-42. Um, you still got some really good players on that team. Julian Young, you got um Isaiah Lewis, who's been who's a good player. Um, I mean they got they're they're talented enough to they they could put a bunch of points up. I mean, I think Harper Woods is a team that they're gonna do some damage in the postseason. I think for them it's just gearing up for the postseason because you know when you look at the division right now it looks like it's lost. <laughs> Because I don't really see anybody touching Troy right now. I really don't with the way that team's been. So if you're Harper Woods and Coach Tuan Porter, I think you're going to be fine. I really do. So just keep doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? Just find a way to get better. You know? Farmington's a team that's red hot right now. Coach Byron Johnson's found something in that team. Greg Grace is playing great basketball right now. So when we look at Farmington, they're rolling right now. One and four to, I mean, one and four to start the year. Four and one their last five games. That's scary. That is absolutely scary when you look at Farmington. They are a scary team. I don't think anybody wants to play them right now with the way that that team's been playing. Um, Seahome, obviously, we know about the, um, they played um slow. They played a lot of stall ball against Lake Orion. Um, played a Princeton offense against the Dragons. So if you want to look at that score, forty thirty four, on Tuesday night, you're gonna look at of course Seahome really. They held Lake Orion to nine points. I think a lot of that's the stall ball. Um, they were up ten and a half, and then Lake Orion found a way to speed them up, and end up winning that game by six. So when I look at so when I look at um when I look at Seaholm, I think they might have found a recipe. Finley Sparby's been playing really well for Coach Mike DeGeer. Um he's gonna be the key going forward for them. Really is. Um Troy Athens has been red hot. I'll tell you what, right now. They're rolling right now. Coach A. Scott's got that team believing. Emmanuel Robson's playing really good basketball for them. I mean, I'll tell you what, right now, I like a lot. I like what Athens is doing right now. I like what they're doing. I mean, they're playing really good basketball right now. And that's a good sign for them. That's a good thing for them. 
Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, Lake Oregon. Um, the Dragons, we know they're still a young team, but they've been finding ways to win games. You got to like what Zach Parks has been doing. You got to like what Ryan Russell has been doing. You got to like what, um, you know, you got to like what they, what that whole team, I mean, Quay Fly has been really been playing really good basketball for this team. Imagine if you have those three guys playing all together really well at the same time. Then you have a Nick Galvin who can go and shoot you at three. Or a, um, or a Gabe Scott who can shoot you at three, stabilize things at the point guard spot. Coach Jose Andradas has got something going at Lake Orion. Really does. I mean, you see it. You really see it. Um, then there's Bloomfield Hills. Um, you look at the Blackhawks. I mean, they're struggling a little bit. But they do got some pieces, though. They do got some pieces. I think they're going to be fine. I really do. So, we'll see what happens. So, when I look at the white division as of right now, um, Troy, obviously, is the top team in there. Then I would say Lake Orion, two. Troy, Athens, three. Um, well, I forgot to mention Southfield. I mean, Southfield, we know, has been up and down. Um... So when I look at the Warriors, um, I think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to be okay for Coach um, Terrence Porter. I think, you know, we'll see what happens with them going forward. So when I look at this division, again, um, repeating it myself here, um, I would say Troy's one, Lake Orion two, Troy Athens three, Harper Woods four, um, Farmington five, um, then um then I would say um Sea Home six, Bloomby Hill seven, A and T eight. That's my take right now in that division right now in the um white division. So we'll see what happens going forward there. And then the red. I mean, when you look at the red, um North Farmington, they did not look great against West Bloomfield, found a way to survive that game. Um they really struggled in that game against West Bloomfield. Um, when I look at West Bloomfield, um, I think the Lakers are better than people think. Coach Arnett Jordan's done a really nice job of that team. Drew Wilson's really fit in nicely to go with Donnie Watts, um, Michael Pittman there. Um, they've they found the right formula for success. They got some good wins. I mean, they got some really good wins, though. So, I really like what Coach Arnett Jordan's been doing over there at West Bloomfield. I mean, I think he's going to be more than fine there. And then you have Oak Park, who just came off a stunning win against Clarkston. 68-66. Um, Gio Hutchins must have had a big game there. He must have went nuts in that game. But for them to go and stun Clarkston, that says a lot. That says a lot about what the Wolves, I mean, like, what they did. I mean, it says a lot. So, that's a big win for them. It's a monster win for them. Could help them confidence-wise going forward. I mean, still, that's a monster win for them. Um, Groves, um, they had a big, they needed a big win after a five-game losing streak. They knocked off Pontiac, Notre Dame Prep. Um, it was a heck of a game there. Um, Obviously, they played John Simpson and Josh Gibson. Um, really has to be the key for Coach Mark West going forward. Is they got to find a third scorer, though. If they can find a third scorer, um, then I think that they're going to go places. So when I look at Groves, maybe, just maybe, this turns things around for them. But they've got to prove that they belong in the red. They got to prove they belong in this division. You know, that and that goes to starting some winning some games in this division. So that's going to be the key for them going forward is they got to start winning some games in this division. Maybe steal some games they're not supposed to win. I mean, they've done it before. I mean, don't get me wrong. They've done it before. So we'll see what happens with them. Ferndale, when I look at the Eagles... Ethan Vineyard's been playing really well for the Eagles. So when you look at his production, he's been playing good basketball. 
Um, I'm wondering where Trenton Roos been. I mean, he's been struggling a little bit for Coach Juan Rickman. That's that's unlike them. Really is. To see where they're at. I mean, yeah, Vineyard's a solid player. They got some other good players as well. They've won two straight, which is good. You know, after a really rough patch. I mean, like, they still got a couple Saturday showcase games still to play. But, you know, when you look at Ferndale, this was almost eerily similar to what happened last year with them. Was they had a really rough patch during Christmas and New Year's. And then they found a way and bounced back. <laughs> now, albeit this year, when I look at the district, and you're looking at Warren Lincoln, who's been really good, playing really good basketball. Um, Detroit Pershing's a dark horse. Um, but Warren Lincoln, to me, is a team, if you're Coach Warren Rickman, I'd be really concerned about. Because the way that team's been playing. I mean, Warren, the A's have been playing really good basketball. And... That's going to be a challenge for them going forward. So if you're Coach Juan Rickman right now, you're getting yourself ready for the postseason, but we're only in January. I mean, I know we're getting close to February, and we know how that's going to be. So we'll see what happens. Um, Adams. Um, <laughs> when I look at the Highlanders, um, they've lost two straight, which is a concern a little bit. It's a big concern. Um, for Coach Isaiah Novak, it's just, Getting back to the basics. Executing your shots. Making sure Peter Kardashian is healthy. Um, Trenton Lagarde has play, been playing really good basketball. But if these injuries keep piling up, they need William G to step up. That's going to be the key for Coach Novak going forward. He's got to get those players to step up. Because if he doesn't, they could be in some trouble. And Adams right now, they've got some concerns. They really do. And last but not least, we got Clarkson. Um, this team's lost two straight. They lost a game they should not have lost to, and that was the Oak Park game, where I don't know how they let them hang around in that game. I really don't. And then and then they lost it at, at the very end. Um, Peyton Fitzsimmons had 26 points, 24 of those in the second half of that game. Um, he really struggled against West Bloomfield. I mean, he really struggled in that game against West Bloomfield. Um, and then, you know, John Collin, Cole Charter, Quinn Roseburg, they're doing everything they can. So when I look at Clarkston, it's they've got to get scoring from everywhere else, you know, everyone else, um, you know, for them to be successful. And then they got to defend. That's life in the red for you. But they've got to find that magic from earlier in the year that got them to this point. they got to find it. They don't. They're in trouble. So when I look at the red right now, and I'm looking at it right now, North Farmington right now stands as the best team in the, in the division. The two, the two is interesting. I still would say West Bloomfield, just with the way that they've been playing. Um, I think they're more trustworthy right now the way that that team is. Um, despite the loss to North Farmington, I still would trust um, Coach Annette Jordan's team right now the way that they're playing. Um, then I would say Ferndale's three. Um, then I would say, um, then I would say like um, Adams right now would be four. Um, Oak Park, five. Um, Clarkson, six. And Grove, seven. So that's really my take on the red division right now um, with those teams right now is, you know, but there's still a ton of improvement to go. I mean, we're in the middle part of the season here on this um, on this um, cold Michigan Siberia day here. Um, and I think this is going to be interesting to see how this stands out. I mean, like, we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure we're going to keep an eye on the football coaching situations over at um, Soffit Arts and Tech and also at Stony Creek. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. I'll post some articles also on the ONTV blog as well. We'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week, everybody.